Hi there everyone, welcome to Jess's Writing Clubhouse, a place where you're going to find updates on my writing process, my writing books, novellas, doing audiobooks, and obviously anything that comes into my mind when it comes to the publishing world. So today I wanted to kind of do what I did a couple of episodes back, which is talk about two of my characters for one of the books that is currently out. And this one is one that just, the one that just got published in May. I had to think about that. And this one is for the Slayer and the Spy. This one features Kane DeAngelis, who is a slayer for the Alpha Body. He is a werewolf wolf and his life mate Sebastian Bastian Valdin. Now Bastian is the CEO of Valdian Inc. and he is obviously a vampire. Now I'm going to, as I did in the last episode, in the last time I did this, I'm going to break down the characters before the story, their inspiration, and my personal connection to them. So let's start with the one that's the main character of this story, and that is Kane DeAngelis. Now before I actually started writing, Kane was much like Abel. He was a completely different person. Originally his name was Kayla. She was a fashion designer who really wanted children of her own but because of a failed relationship that kind of burned her. So I took a little bit of that inspiration and I started looking into Kane because obviously I wanted to change up how this was going because it didn't fit right with what I had originally. And Kane is a he is the oldest sibling in the DeAngelis family. His mother Victoria and his father Roger are very much socially conscious and they are to the point of being very manipulative to their children and prior to this he had moved out moved in with a girl with his fiance heather and him and charlie his adoptive brother decided that they were going to take the oath for becoming a werewolf and specifically becoming a slayer and their parents really did not approve of this at all but they didn't have much choice since both kane and charlie were adults and so they basically have not lived under their parents parents roof in years but Kane has a somewhat relationship with his parents Charlie doesn't and neither does their sister May May has completely separated herself from their parents as well but Kane being the oldest is the one who tends to try to make the peace he doesn't like living under their roof for very obvious reasons, but he also understands why Charlie and May don't necessarily want to be around them. So he has kind of a, a push-pull kind of dynamic with that. Now, his fiance Heather is, she was his best friend like from when they were in school all the way through to adulthood. And it was just kind of generally accepted that they might end up getting married because they've been so close. And Kane kind of followed into that. But when he went to ask her for her hand in marriage, she didn't automatically say yes. She actually took her time to say yes. And there's reasoning behind it that's featured within The Slayer and the Spy. So I'm not going to spoil that part of it. But basically you find out that Kane has been basically, how do I put this properly? Kane's heart is absolutely shattered when he finds out that Heather is pregnant. Now, the one thing that the reader finds out is that werewolves are infertile. They have no ability to get someone pregnant. And the fact she is pregnant is an automatic red flag to Kane that she has cheated on him. And she openly admits it. It was a one night stand and that ends their relationship. And he then proceeds to spend the next four years hopping from bed to bed, basically sating his own needs, but also keeping everyone at arm's reach. Because if they can't get to his heart, then he can't be hurt again. However, that is all foiled two years before the book starts when he meets Bastion during their work 
with Gustav and Abel. And they are now realizing that they have an incredibly strong connection, but Cain wants nothing to do with that connection because it's going to it's something that could potentially harm his heart. And Cain was kind of an inspiration for me because he dealt with things very wrong. Like he is normally a very selfless person. He loves to help people, but when it comes to protecting his heart, Art, he can be an incredible asshole and he would never intentionally hurt someone but by his own very protective need to keep his heart from being shattered like it was by Heather he unintentionally hurts people and I think a lot of people can really kind of understand that it's like I want to be this good person but when I'm trying to protect myself and keep myself from being hurt I'm still gonna end up lashing out and being lied to and being cheated on is something that even in my own reading I don't read. I think I can only name one book that actually has cheating in it and I'm very uncomfy with that particular piece of the plot line because cheating is such a betrayal of trust and it really bothers me and it rubs me the wrong way and it just it hurts my core of being because it's an unfair dynamic where you're giving everything to one person and then that person can't be bothered to give you all of them they have to go find it with someone else and that's very harmful that really messes with your self-esteem and how you view yourself as a person so I wanted to play around with that and specifically with Cain who was the victim of it and I will say that while his actions weren't the greatest he was always very upfront with people it's like I don't do relationships I just am looking for sex I'm looking for just some intimacy that's it I, I have no desire to go further than that Bastion is the one exception to that that he ends up finding where he himself could very easily see them going further. So that's a good segue into Bastion. Now Bastion, he's always had that name, but he's gone through a lot of different transformations. Originally, he was just a Brit. He was tall, dark haired. He was actually a novel writer who would write like textbooks and fiction books and he actually would do that while also just being the oldest in the Valdeim family. He is the oldest grandson of the vampire council leader. He is the one that everyone goes to for their problems. When something needs to be done, Bastion is the one that they call to get it done and it takes a toll on him. He is like the family foundation. He is the one that is holding his family together or in his mind, he's full, he's holding his family together. But prior to becoming a Valdian, he actually has no memories of his life prior to becoming a vampire at 29. And his first memories are of waking up to a werewolf named Adrian, who basically took care of him, fed him, taught him how to hunt a little bit, but very quickly realized that he couldn't give him the life that he needed and proceeded to find him the Valdian family family where he was then adopted in and Adrian's actions really cemented how Bastion views himself. He views himself as being someone who is expendable and he never wants to be expendable. He wants to make sure that if he's going to be a part of a family that he is someone who can contribute, can take care of things, can be there when everyone needs you and that's how he's basically lived his life for the last 500 so odd years. And he, as I said at the top of this, he is the CEO of Valdian Industries, which is the company that creates the red bags for vampires to drink instead of having to hunt for blood from mortals. They also are a key distributor for what's called restrictors, which are put onto every vampire to help tame what's called the demon mind. Demon mind is basically the personification of 
their more primal instincts and it's just a regulator that every vampire needs in order to basically function throughout regular life. And he's very successful with that, obviously. And at the same time, because he's been so successful for it, because he's grown such a big company, it's allowed things to kind of fester within his own company. And what happened was his uh, his grandfather asked him to start kind of keeping his ears out for employees that he had and informing his grandfather about what was happening. And it slowly grew more and more into a job as a corporate spy to find rogue vampires within his own company and those around it and basically turn them over to the conclave. And while he is very good at staying anonymous and staying quiet, this is not a job that he likes doing. He absolutely hates it because it is so anxiety inducing to have to spy on your own people and he doesn't handle that well. And the reason I say he doesn't handle that well is that because of the stress of having to take care of his family and the stress of both his jobs, both the public one and the private one, he has had to undergo a lot of self-regulating when it comes to his anxiety. And one of the things that's helped him is corsets and body binders. And he uses these custom-made corsets to basically keep him stable. And it allows him to continue to work as he normally would and only have some some slight anxiety throughout the day. The body bindings is when he either A, doesn't have any of the corsets cleaned, or B, when he really needs to make sure that he is not going to fall apart. And he is one gigantic ball of stress, and he desperately needs someone to take care of him. And my personal connection with Bastion is that I also have been diagnosed with anxiety, and a lot of the stressors that Bastion goes through during like just everyday life I completely feel and it also is interesting because at the same time I was doing the second draft on this I watched the movie Encanto and the song that Luisa sings Surface Pressure where it's like basically give give your older sister all of this weight make see if she can shoulder it all that basically is how Bastion views himself. He views himself as having the whole world on his shoulders and if he feels like he's constantly crumbling and that if he doesn't stand firm, then his family is going to suffer for it. And that's what makes him a really kind of tragic character because I think everyone in the current generations feels at least a mild amount of anxiety just all the time. And it's it's not fun it's not something that I would recommend to anyone and ultimately it's something that I don't think is ever going to truly go away so I know this is a little shorter of one but again this is just talking about the characters for the Slayer and the Spy and I am very proud of these two and I'm happy that I was able to bring you all their story and I hope you all enjoy it so thank you all for listening and I will speak to you all in the next episode Bye-bye.